Hi, I'm Dr. Angela Yankee. And I'm Dr. Kathleen O'Neill-Smith. Welcome back to the Fire Em Up Doctors, a good medicine docu-series. We are so glad you joined us. We want to provide you with credible health resources, guide you in your treatment options, <laughs> and fire you up to take control of your health. Hello, everyone, and happy Thursday. We're so happy to have those of you who have joined us for all of our webinars back, as well as any newcomers. We're very excited to start our new webinar series today called Pursuing Wellness. Um, Dr. Iki and Dr. Kathleen are very, very excited about this new series, and I think everyone is going to love it. So with that being said, I'd love to welcome your Fire em Up doctors, Dr. Angeli Mon Aiki and Dr. Kathleen O'Neill-Smith. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Kathleen in Boston. How are you? Good. How's everybody doing? Happy October. <laughs> it's already fall. I can't even believe it. Yeah, we decided to pivot. Um, Dr. Kathleen and I uh, teach together for doctors uh, as well as conferences and now with you all in this Fire em Up model, which is functional, integrative, regenerative, restorative internal medicine. And so we wanted to teach you some of the core principles of how we think about patients. And so this new series, we're super excited to share with you. It's rolling out today and we hope you share it with your friends and family. It's gonna be really different. I'm, I'm really excited. It's gonna to be topic-based, but then case-based. So because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we're gonna start with a breast cancer case. Um, but the goal is not the cancer or anything like that. It's to teach people what are things that they can do to be well and to prevent disease when possible. So it's really exciting. I'm so looking forward to this. So yes, those of you who are on the Zoom today, you've been with us for six months. And so I wanna make sure that we respect your schedule as well. So we planned out the next month or two, but keeping in mind that we will not be on for Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas Eve, which is December 24th and New Year's Eve. But other than that, we're gonna continue to be on at least until this pandemic is over. So we haven't forgotten about COVID, but we're just pivoting for the first part of the month uh, to topics of the month. For example, this is Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month. So we're talking breast cancer today, but mark your calendar for the next uh, several Thursdays there. It says above, um, we're doing case study the first part of the month. And so we'll share a case with you today. And then we have a special guest, Dr. Anna Kabaka uh, next Thursday. And we're gonna be discussing um, so the WINS Health Initiative data and the risk uh, benefit of postmenopausal hormone replacement therapy. And then the third session of the month, we'll be talking about variations on a theme, um, which is we're gonna be talking about oral contraceptive use and the risk for breast cancer. And then finally, the last Thursday of the month, we'll always do a COVID update. Unless something is breaking through, we, we will be waiting to talk about COVID till the last Thursday of the month. Yeah. Sound good? We know, we know that you liked when we had a guest. So we're, our goal is to bring in a well-renowned guest speaker on the topic that we're discussing that month and to have you have some other perspectives um, with, the, with respect to the topic that we're discussing. So one Thursday a month, it will either be the second or the third, but depending on people's schedules, we'll bring in a guest speaker. Yeah, so please mark your calendar. It'll be Dr. Anna Kabeka, a friend of both of ours for many years actually. And I think you'll really enjoy um, what she has to share about um, uh, her view on postmenopausal hormone replacement therapy and breast cancer. So as you all know, uh, one in eight women actually are afflicted with breast cancer within their lifetime. And it's usually the kind that uh, affects the breast tissue itself. So we thought we would take a little turn on that and talk about uh, a special kind of breast cancer called anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So the way we're going to start the discussion, the like big we do, word, yeah. <laughs> it's a lymphoma. It's a it's lymphoma. A yeah, it's a type of lymphoma. So we, in medicine, we like to teach based on stories or cases. So here you go. Um, and this patient actually gave permission to share. So she's a 52 year old woman who actually has had breast implants for 17 years. And she had in 20, February of 2017, 
she actually noticed that around the nipple on the left, it was starting to itch and it had some tenderness. Uh, she had a mammogram and ultrasound that were negative. But me as her primary doctor, she started having weird allergies. In fact, uh, I remember uh, six months before we finally got the implant out, she actually started having anaphylaxis to shrimp, and that had never happened before. In addition, she started getting acne and candida or oral thrush. So clearly something was wrong with her immune system. Next slide. So the allergies of fatigue, the changes in the breasts were all new. The candida was really strange. I worked her up for other immune problems, couldn't find it. Um, next slide. So finally, I actually sent her for uh, to the breast specialist. And I, and I said, I told, I told her that she should get it taken out, that I was worried it was the breast because the rash around the breast didn't go away, but yet the mamm mammogram and ultrasound didn't show anything. So I actually asked them to do cytology, looking for abnormal cells as well as culture for infection. Next slide. And sure enough, the cytology came back with this very rare lymphoma. So if you remember from the immune system army, the lymphocytes, the T cells are the queen in the immune system army. Well, this type of lymphoma is relatively unique to silicone breast implants. It's a T cell lymphoma. Classically with breast lymphomas, they're B cells, but the ones related to the silicone breast implants are called T cells. So this has a huge name. Uh, ALCL, anaplastic large cell lymphoma. The good news is that if it's caught early, early stage, you remove the breast implant, clean out the wound and you're cured. If you wait too long, it spreads to the lymph nodes and you, can, you need chemotherapy and it's hard to beat. But this was only acknowledged in 2014 and around the world, they're actually starting to, to do databases on it. Um, so we really don't know the prevalence, but within my 6,000 patient practice, I've had in the past five years, three patients with ALCL. So we the theme for today is understanding how foreign bodies in your body can stimulate your immune system, not necessarily in a good way. And the fancy word for that is called adjuvant, because this patient, by her story, she actually started having that shelf uh, shrimp anaphylaxis or severe immune problems as well as candida. And in the end, once we took it out uh, and I started doing some immune support for her, she can eat shrimp now. And it's only been about a year and a half. So I've been doing some cleanup with her diet, doing some intravenous nutritional therapy to support her as well as immune supplementation, doing the things that we taught you earlier in COVID on how to support the immune system. So we have returned her immune system back to normal. Next slide. So this is a slide from a review article published about a year ago on how come silicone breast implants can stimulate lymphoma. So they think if you haven't seen a breast implant, it basically feels like a gel pad, like you would use in your shoe, but it's a foreign body in your body. So for example, hers was on the left. So she had a left breast implant. Well, it turns out that you can develop something called biofilm around the breast implant because your body thinks it's foreign and it causes a lot of inflammation. And some, uh, there's literature that thinks that, uh, that the breast implant actually is a toxin in the body. So the immune system being smart recognizes it as foreign. And in the middle there, it stimulates your immune system army. If you've read Kick COVID-19 to the Curb, you'd understand that whole process of stimulating the immune system army. And then when you have chronic stimulation of the immune system army, it can actually get confused and one cell goes rogue and keeps replicating and that's cancer or clonal expansion if you wanna hear the scientific word. And so that's what happened to her, chronic irritation from the breast implant, clonal expansion of a type of immune cell called the T cell. And so she developed a type of T cell lymphoma called anaplastic large cell lymphoma, secondary to a foreign body in her body a silicone breast implant. You remove that and she's better now. And I love this slide because it's such a great visual. And when you look on the left side of the slide and you see the breast implant, you have to just imagine that when it has silicone in it, it's like mesothelioma for the lung. You know, when, when you know, in the, in the Navy, when people were exposed to asbestos and other things, 
that's an adjuvant. It activates the immune system. So when you put silicone as part of this breast implant into a body, the body is going to do something with it. It's going to circulate. And all of those you see at the top, the lymphocytes and the other inflammatory cells are going to go around and around and say, what is this? What is this? The interesting thing is it doesn't just the ALCL, the lymphoma can stay localized, but the immune system response can be any part of the body. And you'll see that in some upcoming slides. But so the signaling from these inflammatory cells that are surrounding and trying to figure out, you know, it's like imagining a shipwreck at the bottom of the ocean, the fish go around it and they try to figure out what it is. The lymphocytes try to understand what is this thing in the body and, and what are we gonna do with it? And the biofilm, it's just like a biofilm would, would happen on a shipwreck. You'd get all kinds of algae growing on it. The biofilm allows for a nidus, a place for bugs to grow and other things to happen. It just makes it a big circular event of many toxins, including the implant as a toxin, and really just affects this kind of like rogue nature of these cells trying to figure out and go wild and expand to what is this. And ultimately you end up with lymphocytes that create a lymphoma because they don't understand what this is and they go rogue. Yeah, so just to explain the biofilm, it's like plaque on your teeth, that's biofilm. So basically this implant's foreign and you could get biofilm in the inner circle of the blue on the left. Um, and that actually stimulates the immune system. It's hiding bacteria in there. Mm -hmm. The other point was, as you said, like fish circling something at the bottom of the ocean. So those little pink lymphocytes are so confused that they're hyperreactive such that she was eating shrimp and it would attack, it would, it would expand her immune system when she ate shrimp. And then again, those are the same cells that fight yeast or candida. And so they were just very confused. So clearly something was wrong with her immune system. And I think the proof is in the pudding that we took out the implant and her immune system's now normal. She doesn't have candida and she can eat, totally eat shrimp. She got so bad that I had to give her an EpiPen just to be in a restaurant with shrimp uh, before that implant was taken out. I mean, so fortunate because 17 years the immune system is so patient and really tries hard to do well by us. So it's really important. And it taught me actually, because she had said that her breast was itching and it was red and, you know, mammogram ultrasound, negative, negative. And so finally I'm like, we got to take that out. And sure enough, that's what it was. Um, next slide. Dr. Kathleen loves this slide. Do you want to talk about the slide? I do. So this is talking about the immune system or the lymphocytes and other parts of um, other types of blood cells like macrophages and monocytes that you see on the right hand side. So the immune system is influenced by many things. It can be influenced by adjuvants to go rogue, or you can get the endocrine system, which are sex hormones, adrenal glands, thyroid to you know, basically try to re-regulate and restore homeostasis within the immune system or any other uh, neuroendocrine steroids or neuroendocrine neurotransmitters at, to attempt to influence the immune system to keep it well. The microbiome is enormously complex and also part of the uh, immune system, a very significant part. But one of the interesting things is you'll see in one of the next slides that when the immune system gets confused, as Dr. Aki described so well, the endocrine system can be affected because those arrows are bi-directional. So you'll see that thyroid disease, whether it's underactive or overactive thyroid, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism can be impacted, can be created as a result of immune system confusion from an adjuvant or from a a bug, a microbe, a bacteria, a virus, or any other thing. So really, really important to, to understand how the top two, the neuroendocrine system with its neurochemicals and the endocrine system with the hormones, et cetera, act as signaling therapies to the immune system, medicines, medicinal signaling therapies to try to regulate and modulate the immune system to do the best job it can do. But we'll see on the next slide um, 
other, other things that can result from this immune confusion within the endocrine system, et cetera. So we're gonna, in, we're gonna pivot just slightly to talking about autoimmune disease. So basically in our case of the 52 year old woman, she had lymphoma, so that's an immune dysregulation. Autoimmunity where the body attacks itself is also an immune dysregulation. So we're gonna introduce you to a doctor named Dr. Watad who studied after, under Dr. Schoenfeld, who's considered the godfather of immun, modern immunology. He was the one that endorsed our book, Kick COVID-19 to the Curb. But anyway, Dr. Watad wrote this landmark paper on um, studying silicone breast implants and the development of autoimmune disease. But before we go there, we have to explain Asia syndrome, which has now been colloquially called Schoenfeld syndrome. So basically the long and the short of it, it, it stands for autoimmune syndromes induced by adjuvants. So basically there's criteria, both major and minor criteria, but basically your body gets exposed to an infection, a vaccine, silicone, or some other adjuvant, and it causes clinical symptoms such as muscle pains, myalgias, arthritis or arthralgias, fatigue, brain fog, uh, cognitive impairment, memory loss, dry mouth, feeling hot. Uh, a biopsy of an organ could show a positivity and removing it shows improvement. The minor criteria are some clinical uh, things like autoantibodies and certain types of um, clinical manifestations like irritable bowel or evidence in what are called biomarkers or labs. So that's Asia syndrome. So with that in mind, silicone breast implants are considered an adjuvant to autoimmune disease. So the next slide. So this was the data and it was published from a cohort of 100, about 125,000 Israeli women and essentially an HMO, so kind of a closed population. But what this is showing is that if you have had silicone breast implants, that's the second column, you have a 26% chance of having any autoimmune or rheumatological disorder. <clears throat> and the highest risk were the S's types of autoimmune disease. So I know some people on the call right now, Sjogren's syndrome, scleroderma, and sarcoidosis were the highest risk of autoimmune uh, disease associated with silicone breast implants. I think what's important is that when you think of autoimmune diseases, these are the names of the diseases, but the slide before demonstrated the symptoms of the disease, the muscle pain, the chronic fatigue, the arthritis, the joint pain, the skin disorders. So when, you know, with those, it, for people who have adjuvant exposure, when you think of any of those symptoms, you definitely want to be uh, evaluated so that you can understand if you can mitigate or get reduce your risk or get rid of your risk entirely for something happening after exposure to an adjuvant. The, the main teaching, Dr. Kathleen and I attended and also presented it the Controversies on Rheumatology and Autoimmunity Conference in March of 2019 in um, Florence, Italy. And it was led by Dr. Schoenfeld. And the main thing that I remember him saying is that if you have a family history for autoimmune disease, you really wanna be careful about putting foreign things in your body. Like for example, if, you have a 20, if you're a 22 year old and you wanna put breast implants in, but your mother has autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's, thyroiditis or rheumatoid arthritis, you wanna think twice about putting adjuvants in your body. Next slide. This is great because this is another, way, this is another review article by Andrew Campbell and it shows the same type of triangle that we saw before, that there are, look in the bottom left, environmental factors or things that we are exposed to. And the number of environmental triggers is extensive. So just really understanding the chemicals in your, in your environment, uh, mold in your environment, exposure to bacteria and viruses like COVID, um, and when you get vaccines and how you care for your mouth, and obviously not putting in foreign things whenever possible and having conversations with doctors around that if they're suggesting it is really important because based on the genetics, as Dr. Aki just said, if your family has autoimmune disease and its history, 
you are more likely to get an autoimmune disorder. But I know many people who don't have a family history of autoimmunity who also develop autoimmune disorders when they are exposed to something that's foreign to the body. Um, and it's really important to understand that we are all at risk with the enormous number of exposures that we have and that keeping your gut healthy and keeping the inner lining of your mouth and your GI tract, because the mouth is part of the GI tract, healthy is some of the most important uh, behaviors you can focus on in order to stay well and not allow this to happen. That's why in both of our populations, if especially if there's autoimmunity, we actually look at the gut first, clean, it, clean up the diet, no gluten, no dairy, make sure the gut's healthy. Because you'll be inducing other autoimmune or antibodies, other, other immune confusion with, with crappy food. Exactly. Next slide. So I don't know if you remember a few years back that Angelina Jolie had a prophylactic, meaning preventative bilateral mastectomy and then breast implants due to a family history for breast cancer. And she had a genetic positivity called BRCA2. So basically by taking out her native breast, she decreased her risk of breast cancer almost 90%, but she increased the risk for autoimmune disease by about a quarter. So because she put in silicone because she put in silicone. If she hadn't put in sil silicone, we, we don't have any information that she would have increased her risk for autoimmunity or autoimmune disease, but, but she traded the breast cancer risk for autoimmune disease because of the use of silicone breast implants as adjuvants. So that's a really, you know, I, I don't think anybody told her, I don't think she had conversations around this, but it's really important to understand that. Next slide. So, so yeah, this is our friend, Dr. Anna Kabeca, and uh, she is a best-selling author of both Hormone Fix and Keto Green 16. She will be joining us next week uh, from 3 to 3.45 on our show. And we've asked her to talk about the women, the data on the risk of breast cancer and the Women's Health Initiative data. So, oh, Dr. Anna, you're on here. She says oh, she can't wait. Yay. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Dr. Anna, thank you. What a beautiful picture you have, by the way. <laughs> so Dr. Anna is in GYN. She focuses on women's health. So it'll be really exciting to have her on the show and to hear what she has to say and simplifying the WH, the Women's Health Initiative study for us. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Anna. All right. So there's a few questions in the chat. Um, so the questions are, yes, this patient did have bilateral mastectomy. Um, the patient I presented, the 52-year-old, um, we've cleaned up her immune system now. I said, I, the lymphoma is past medical history because it had not advanced into the rest of her lymph nodes. So her prognosis is quite excellent. And like I said, they're just now collecting data on anaplastic large cell lymphoma, only recognized in 2014 by the FDA. The second question, is, are most, if not all, breast implants today using silicone implants? Yes, pretty much the, the shell is silicone, even if the inside is saline. So um, I have, unfortunately, I live, we live in a college town here in Gainesville, and I've tried to convince so many young women not to implant, not to do breast implants for aesthetic reasons. Um, sometimes successful, sometimes not. But I'm actually trying to manage currently a 75-year-old woman who had breast cancer five years ago and her daughter happened to be a plastic surgeon. She got implanted with textured breast implants and Allergan called her to say they've been recalled. And so what to do now? Uh, are we gonna explant her? So basically I'm trying to manage her risk and her longevity, et cetera. So it's got quite a dilemma. So those really? textured implants especially are problematic when it comes to anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So my understanding, cause there was an article last summer I think it was, I think it was in 20, it was 2019 or 2020 that was in the New York Times. It was really interesting that basically was called, it was, it called out the plastic surgeons who were doing silicone breast implants because the deal that was made was that they could do those for people who had breast cancer because everybody thought that would be a, a good thing for women to be able to have breast implants post a mastectomy for breast cancer, BRCA or otherwise. 
And what the deal was, was that the companies that were doing the silicone breast implants had promised to keep a database of the people who had gotten the breast implants and their health status, but that didn't happen. And so now there's evidence as we just presented that there are sequelae or consequences of these breast implants and the, the promise that was made by the, by the companies had not been kept. So there's a lot of controversy around this, but the, the key thing is, is you, know, you really gotta be thinking about potential consequences that could happen as a result of putting foreign things into your body. It's a really difficult conversation. I think if you're doing it for you know, cosmetic reasons, it's a little bit easier, but if it's post breast cancer mastectomy, I think it's a, it's a lot tougher you know, for people because there's a big adjustment um, when, if, you, if you have to have a mastectomy. So it's a conversation to have with your doctor. It's a conversation to have with your, um, with your PCP, with the doctor that would consider doing the surgery. Most of my patients who have breast implants, it's a really hard conversation to have, have very significant myofascial pain syndrome. And they literally have a very hard time believing that it's related to the implants because of the time frame at which the myofascial pain happens. So you can have implants for a long time and the myofascial pain syndrome could start five years later or 10 years later. And that's really difficult for people to understand. But the immune system is very patient and it really tries to maintain its uh, lack of confusion and to do well, but ultimately there's not much you can do. When people in my practice have, had, have been explanted, the pain syndrome has gone away for sure. Mine too. Um, yeah. yeah, always gone away. So something to keep in mind. But thank you. This was a, a good case on, on breasts and yeah. Breast. Yeah. And, and getting to that point about myofascial pain, it, whether or not they're leaking, sometimes when we pull them out, they actually get better with that inflammatory myofascial pain syndrome, as you described. Yeah. They don't even have to be leaking though, Dr. A. Right. Exactly. Think, whether or not they're intact or leaking, the body's seeing it as foreign. So it's activating inflammation and oxidative stress, fire rust and immune confusion. So yeah, that wraps it up for the questions. I just wanted to let my population know that we do have rapid COVID swabs available in 15 minutes now. So, and I know Dr. Kathleen will within a week or so. So anyway, uh, thank you, Dr. Kathleen from Boston, Emily for navigating this and Dr. Anna, we look forward to you being with us next Thursday. Oh yeah. And, and for everybody be safe, be well, and God bless you all. Bye. God bless. Can't wait to see you Anna next week. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Now on to uh, some supplement deals we have. If you want to stay on and listen, we'd love to have you, but if not, we completely understand. So our first big one is vitamin D. Vitamin D is extremely important, especially dealing with COVID as well. So we have a 10% off coupon code. It's gonna be good for the pretty much the whole entire month of October up until the 29th. We have mycelized D3 and K2 in a one fluid ounce. D3, we have in both capsule form and liquid form, but the capsule form is going to be on sale and it's going to be 2000 IU or 5000 IU, whichever works better for you. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, you're always able to email us at firemupdoctors at gmail.com or call NFIM. And then for those of you who have seen Dr. Anna's store before or know who Dr. Anna is, she has a few of her supplements also on sale through our website, firemupdoctors.gethealthy. And this is gonna include the Jolva Cream, Keto Green Shake, the Mighty Maca, Keto PH, the test strips, and then the Pura Balance PPR Cream. And again, all this will be available through our website, firemupdoctors.gethealthy.store. The code for the 10% off for Dr. Anna's supplements is fire, um, fire them up Dr. Anna up above. If you want to take a screenshot or write that down, and then I will go back and just say this was fire them up bite V I T D. And again, if you go onto our website and type in these coupon codes, you will go ahead and get your 10% off. As you all know, our fascia medical textbook is available on sale, both in person at Fire Up, 
uh, NFIM, I'm very sorry, and also available on our website as well as Amazon. If you'd like to do curbside pickup, you can order a paperback for $55 and pick it up at the NFIM office. There's only a limited amount, so make sure you get onto that if you would like to do that. If not, it's also available on firemupdoctors.com and Amazon. We have a 20% off discount code right here, SCI20. This can only be used on our website though. Amazon will unfortunately not honor this code. So if you want to take the discount, um, go ahead and purchase through our website. And finally, we still have a few paperback copies of our kit COVID-19 to the curb left in our office. And of course, they're always available on digital copy um, ebook online, which is $9.99 on Amazon Kindle, Google Play, and Barnes and Noble. If you purchase our guidebook kit COVID-19 to the curb, we will take 20% off the following vitamin C and zinc AG. Again, you just have to make sure you show us proof of purchase, which is either a paper receipt or an email or a screenshot of some sort, and we will go ahead and honor that code for you. Um, that is it for supplements. Next week, join us to see Dr. Anna Kabeca, and she will talk about some women's health stuff as well as breast cancer. And yes, we hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you next week. We're so glad you joined us today. We hope we've given you the tools to take control of your health. For more good medicine and information about any treatments, supplements, and resources discussed today, please visit us at www.firemopdoctors.com. That's F-I-R-R-I-M up doctors.com. And wherever you're listening from, remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels so you don't miss out. The information provided is not a substitute for professional medical advice. This should not be used to diagnose, treat, or manage health problems without consultation. If you do experience any of the symptoms discussed today, please contact your nearest healthcare professional.